this is the other custom that my sister ordered for her friend. Lord have mercy. This is a lot. So this is another huge one. Since it's a custom, it is another big one. So here is the toolkit. This came from stitchdiamond.com. So here is the kit that comes with the painting. Here are the drills. Let's see, I can't remember what size this is. 50 by 75. So it's a little bit smaller than the bullet painting that I did. I can't wait to get him back. He's actually at Hobby Lobby right now being framed. <laughs> Sounds funny. Um, yeah. So let's see. Give me a minute. Let me pause you and I'll come back when I get this straightened out so we can see it better. All right. So here is the painting. This is little Miss Sadie. She passed away, um, I guess it's been about two months now, maybe. But she's a cute little dachshund. I actually have met her, had met her before, and she's a pretty sweet little dog. So that is the painting. You can see there how big it is. All right, so it did come rolled on the foam, and then you can see it was packaged in the long tubular bubble so it came perfect no creases no dents no complaints so let's dig in and see what we've got going on here with miss sadie so we have the inventory sheet as you can see here and this is a ton of colors there is the actual photo so that is what the painting looks like. So it's kind of mind blowing how many colors. Again, this blows my mind how many colors you get. So you can see there is the inventory sheet. We have 60 colors on this. I'm almost done doing the inventory and so far I have come across one bag of drills that I'm short. And unfortunately, it's a single color, um, or it's a color where there's only one bag. So I'm gonna have to pull out my spare squares and hope that I have some of that color. Um, what I did was I hadn't put away um, the bullet drills yet, um, which actually turned out to be a pretty good thing because a lot of the same colors, I'm cleaning off boxes if you're wondering why I'm shaking. <laughs> um, I was able to, or I, try that again. Some of the colors that are, were in bullet are in Sadie. So, um, I was able to just like change the number on the box. It's really funny because, well, I guess because the number of it, um, 152 was number one for bullet and number one for Sadie. It's just funny how they have the same pink. Um, but yeah, so I'm up to number 46. I've been suffering with vertigo this past week and I, my neck is like really tight. So I've been stretching and stretching and stretching and trying to get my neck to loosen up. And I just, I was feeling pretty good today as you could probably tell from just a second ago when I unpaused this or when I was doing this video. Um, and I just was stretching my neck and it popped like really, one of those like really hard pops. And now I'm like super dizzy again. So I'm afraid to move my head. I am okay moving my eyes, but if I move my head, the whole room like spins. So um, I'm going to have to postpone finishing this until um, later when I feel better. So um, 
you're probably going to see another outfit soon. Um, but I just thought I would come in and give you an update and show you um, how far I've, or tell you how far I've gotten. And I will be back when I can move my head and yeah, see you in a bit. I am ready to portion out, out um, my liner so I can work in small sections like I did with bullet. So I thought I would show you how I do it. And because um, I've had quite a few people asking, so I thought I would just go through the process and show you. I like to work in four by six sections. I don't know, that's just the way I've always marked off my painting. So I have my ruler lined out, <laughs> lined out laid out and I'm lining it up with the edge of the liner, which you can't see. I'll move it down so you can see. So the edge of the liner is right here. You can see that. So what I do is I use that as my straight edge on this side um, to get my ruler mostly straight. So at this stage, it's not all that important that your ruler is straight, <coughs> Excuse me, but it does help. So I have a Sharpie because that's pretty much the only thing that marks on this liner paper that you can actually see. So I put a line at four. You can barely see that. So we do four, eight, 12, 16, and then I will slide my ruler down and line it up. Make sure my marks still line up. So, and then 16 is the end of the liner. So anyway, so I do that down the length. I do several passes, passes, that's not the right word. Um, anyway, I go down the length of the canvas every several inches, three or four um, three or four times. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my words today for some reason. So there is that. So now I have four inch sections going down. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. I'll just leave it this way. So now what I do is I take my ruler and using the top of the liner, not the canvas, the liner, using the top of the liner for my straight line and then my marks for my other straight line. And then what I do is I take, not my Sharpie, I take my X-Acto knife, helps if I put my cutting mat. <laughs> I didn't want to cut my table, although theoretically you should not be cutting all the way through anyway, but just in case, I have a cutting mat under my piece, my canvas. So again, lining everything up nice and straight. And then you just want to lightly cut. And I'm just going to move. Actually, we'll do all this across first. And it's really not important that this is perfectly straight because, you know, it's just the liner. I don't know, maybe it's just my OCD. And um, also a good reason to have a cutting mat under your canvas. It will also help you not push down so hard and chance going all the way through your canvas. That way you get, you have a better idea of the pressure you're putting, I guess. I don't know. I just seem to be able to gauge it better. Whereas if you're on like a regular table or floor or something, you might push too hard 
and go all the way through. That's no bueno. All right, so now I just moved my cutting mat down and I'm lining up my cut with the two marks that are left on the liner. And I'm gonna complete, ooh, see that went way off. I'm going to complete my downward, and see I'll show you. It's just the liner. The canvas is still intact. It does seem to go through the adhesive as well, but again, it's not gonna matter. As long as you're not cutting through the canvas, you're okay. Just need to readjust here. This is, in my opinion, the best way to work on a large painting. And this is from just the number of paintings I've done and listening to other um, diamond painting enthusiasts. Uh, this is not my idea. This was told to me when I was complaining to a fellow diamond painting friend um, about how daunting the large paintings are. She only works on, she only buys big ones. Like, I mean, she 30 by 40. She's like, that's too small for me. But um, she had told me about this of sectioning off. And you can do this with your clear liners also. So if you have a huge painting with a clear liner, you can section it off and then put um, masking tape on those lines before you cut. That way, the because that clear paper is so flimsy, that way it'll give it a little bit more stability before you start cutting. So now I'm going to turn my canvas this way, which is a little bit more challenging. And I am going to section off my, um, make my sections again. But this time I'm going to do six inches because this, we're going this way. Um, again, you can make them however you want, whatever size you want. You can do square, whatever. But since my canvas is a rectangle, I figure four by six just, I don't know, it just works. So what I did was I lined up my cut line my ruler with my cut line so I can be a little bit straighter. But again, it's not that important. It's just my OCD and I'm just talking my way through it for you. So you can, you know what I'm doing because anyway. All right, so we're doing six, 12 and 18. And then again, lining up. Six, twelve, and eighteen. And one more time should do it. We'll do this all the way down. Six, twelve, and eighteen. So now I just turn my ruler this way and line up my three marks that I made. And I've got to be extra careful when I go through. So let's see if I put enough pressure on this bottom one. La -la. So see, whoops, that didn't. So see, now you have a nice manageable section to work in. Um, Cause when I first started, I was always, I thought I had to do all of one color before I could move on. And when you get bigger than 30 by 40, that really is a very daunting task. And you always miss some and it's so frustrating. So I was really happy when I was told about this cause it never dawned on me to, you know, cut through the liner 
and make sections for myself. That never, never crossed my little noggin. So there we have it again. See, just cutting through the liner. And we'll do this one more time with these marks. And then I'll do it again. And then little Miss Sadie. I do have all the colors sorted and I'm I'm really kind of happy with my procrastination this time because about half of the colors that I had on bullets painting are in Sadie's painting. So I hadn't put away the drills from finishing bullet yet. So all I did was just kind of rearranged because you know they're different numbers than what they were on bullet. But um so it kind of saved me a little bit of work putting, you know, putting them away. At least I didn't have to put them away twice. So I was kind of happy in that sense that I've been under the weather, so to speak, the last couple of weeks that I have just been kind of lazy and blah. So we have one more cut to make. And then I will show you the drills. Hopefully I'll be able to show you the drills because they're already in my little Harbor Freight boxes. I think they're out of the plastic. So hopefully you'll be able to see them well enough to get an idea of the colors. All right, so there is that. I love this cutting mat. It's magnetic and the ruler is magnetic. It's fabulous. Okay, so let's put that there. And here is Sadie all sectioned out, ready to go. Okay, so this isn't the best, but I'm trying to get it where you will be able to see the colors. So we have all 60 colors. <clears throat> this is... Now I had these left over from Bullets Painting and a little bit um, extra in the container. So those are just a ton. And then this is Sadie also. Okay, so we'll start from the bottom and go up, I guess. Might as well, right? So we have brown. I'll try to go fast because I know this is like excruciatingly painful. Lavender. Try to move them around a little bit. See, that's not, this is, hopefully this will work. Try to get myself out of it so I'm not so washed out. Another lavender. And this is supposed, this is an ot light, so it's supposed to show true colors, but I don't know. They might lie. This is a burgundy kind of color. Purple. This is an awesome color. It's like a lipstick, coral, beautiful. <laughs> I can't show you. I hope this is coming through on screen better than it is from my end. There's a beautiful periwinkle. Another awesomely bright coral just looks like lipstick to me. It's so pretty. This is charcoal gray. Have a pinky brown color, pinkish brown color. This is just a little bit darker of that same color. The shade. Then we have our pale blue. Oof, that's getting washed out really bad. This is a really pale blue, almost white. I forgot which order I put them in. And this is a little bit of a darker pale blue. We have another lavender. darker purple, 
it just blows my mind that there are 60 colors on this little as well. It's not that little, but still, there's more than there was on Bullet. And Bullet had a brick background, so you would have thought that. I thought for sure he'd have more, but this is dark, dark brown. Look at the sparkle, so pretty. Like a pile of coal. Beautiful lavender again. Lots of purple on this little gal. Another purple. Just lost one, did you see that? This is a beige. We have another brown, darker here, getting darker. Whoops, that one. This is a reddish brown, orangey brown, not red. Orangey brown. We have pale peach. Navy. Well, now I don't have a box to put my. <clears throat> didn't think this through all the way. We have another brown. This is kind of like an army green, dark, dark green color. Blue, almost slate blue, but not quite. This is an awesome raspberry. This is a kind of a wine burgundy color. Another one of those really cool corally lipstick colors, almost the color of my nail polish. <laughs> this is another pale bluish green. Another dark blue. Pale pink. Another burgundy wine kind of color. This is another shade of purple. Looks more chocolate kind of purple. We have another pale pink. This is, I really hope y'all aren't going crazy over this. I'm trying. Gray. Very pale gray. Another really cool coral color. This is a brown. Gray. Burgundy. Well, no, this is not burgundy. This is more of a kind of a cherry red color. It's pretty. This is a purpley gray kind of color. Gray with a touch of purple, I call it. This is another purple with a little bit of gray in it. Light gray. A little bit darker gray. Gray again, darker still. This is a bright red. This is a really pretty pink. Then we have a darker pink. Gray. Oops. Another purple. This is black. Another 
another brown. Almost said charcoal. Ah, I know my colors, really, I do. Pale pink. Dusty mauve. Do you say it mauve or mauve? How do you say it? I say mauve. Pale lavender. A little bit darker purple. Slate blue. This is a beautiful eggplant color. And then we have bubblegum, I call it. So I just did, I had number um, 12 and number 44 that needed two containers. So those are there. And then I did um, five containers total of black. And then I have the um, extra bags here. So I didn't want to put them all in a box. I mean, I've got extra boxes here, but that just seems ridiculous. So I will, as I use, go through these five, then I will like refill. There it is. So that is that. Here is the setup that I will use to get started on this painting. As you can see, I have my um, easel, my tabletop easel, and I have put the bottom part of the canvas. The glare is too much. Let's see what happens. That's a little bit better. Okay, so I put the bottom part of my canvas underneath. I have my light pad here. And then that way I can work on these sections and then I can slide my light pad over and I use this clip. Let me move. So as I work across, I just slide my light pad over and then I use this little clip to hold it in place. This actually came with um, a toolkit that I got. So it works perfectly for the diamond paintings. So I can just slide, whoops, and my cord caught. Give me a second. Oh, sorry. Bear with me. There we go. Cord was hung up on whew, my cabinet door here. Okay. So with my light pad, in place. I would like to have a bigger light pad, but for now this works. And then I just clip painting and it's all um, taken care of. So as I work down, I just pull it up kind of like a, like a roll of paper kind of like thing. So I pull it up and then when it gets too big, I will drape it over the top of my easel board. So I just tuck my key right here on the side. I have all of my drills right here. My pins that I'm going to use for this painting. I have my extra wax. I have my little trash drill bowl. And there you have it. That is my setup for my big painting. And I hope I didn't bore you to tears. I hope I kept you interested and um, I'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching.